So what's going on guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another Zombies video. We are back with another Q&A this series where I take your questions from the comment section below to do with the zombie storyline, easter eggs and I answer them. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you drop a like rating, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, but let's get into it. Here we go. Just quickly, now that the Ether story is over, for some of my next videos, I'm going to do some top fives. I think we're going to start off with the top five worst bosses. So let me know in the comment section below what your list would be. But getting into the first question of the day, this is from Dylan Thomas, and he says, In the Giant, didn't Nikolai say that he killed Richtofen around the fire? Now, if we go back to this map, which was the first one besides from Shadows of Evil, but it was the first map with our premise characters, in Black Ops 3. There is a radio from Nikolai Belensky and he says this. It is not all bad news, Nikolai. We may have failed in our mission, but at least there is now one less Richtofen to deal with. If it is any consolation, tell him that the first one is the hardest. I should know. I've killed at least three Richtofens. There was the one in the fire, the one with the bolt hook, and the one... What? No one told me. Sorry. Forget what I just said. Everything will be fine. These are recordings from our premise characters. There are also ones from Takio and Dempsey. But they are messages to their other selves that they sent before the giant so that they can listen to when they arrive here. And in Nikolai's he says, It's not all bad news, Nikolai. We may have failed our mission, but at least there's one less Richtofen to deal with. If it's any consolation, tell him that the first one was the hardest. I should know. I've killed at least three Richtofens. There was the one in the fire, the one with the Botuk, and the one... What? No one told me. Sorry, forget everything I just said. Everything will be fine. So Nikolai is telling his other self and the giant not to be worried about killing Richtofen, because as we know in this map, that's what they travelled here to do, to kill Ultimus Richtofen. But Nikolai's saying before this, he's already killed three other versions of Richtofen in three different ways. He killed one of them in a fire, one of them with a boat hook, and then he's about to tell us the third one, where it seems like he suddenly realises he's not supposed to be saying any of this. Almost like he shouldn't be telling other Nikolai that they've already tried to kill different versions of Richtofen. But it doesn't quite line up with your comment because in his quote he actually says he's killed Richtofen in the fire, not around the fire. And this is relevant because it could have been a hint all the way back in Black Ops 3 at the very beginning in the Giant to tag the Toten where we see Nikolai kills Ultimus Richtofen around the campfire in the woods. But in the Giant his specific quote says he killed Richtofen in the fire. But what this is telling us, and what we already knew, is before the characters arrived at the Giant, for a few years they were searching for Ultimus Richtofen, going around different universes and timelines, killing different versions of him, where eventually they arrived at the Giant and killed the right one. We know these specific versions of our Ultimus characters in Black Ops 3 were carefully picked out as those were the souls that needed to be collected. Nikolai also tells us he killed one version of Richtofen with a boat hook, which is interesting. I don't think that could relate to anything we know, other than maybe back in Siberia, or we also saw a boat in Zetsubonoshima, but that doesn't make sense. But yes, what you are saying is, in the giant, when Nikolai said he killed Richtofen around the fire, could this have been a hint to what we saw happen in Tagdo Toten? And like I said, the only small difference is he says he killed Richtofen in the fire, and he's clearly talking about ones he's killed previous to the giant, but this still could have been a hint to what we were going to see in the future. Primus Nikolai shoots Ultimus Richtofen, specifically undead Richtofen, around the campfire in the forest. The next question from Lucas says, do we have an explanation for the eye colour of the zombies? Now since the last time I spoke about this, Treyarch haven't said anything, however, we have had a few more maps. Now, we already know when the zombies eyes are blue, they were controlled by Richtofen while he was inside of the MPD. When the zombies eyes were yellow, as they have been most of the time, they were controlled by Samantha. When they were orange in Buried, they were controlled by Maxis. And then we've had two other colours, one being white in Alpha Omega. At that point, we know Avogadro was inside of the APD, so we can assume he was in control. That explains the white eye colour, and the other one is red. We see this colour in maps like Blood of the Dead, Mob of the Dead, and more recently in Tagdo Toten, and if we listen to a radio from Jebediah Brown back in 1885, in Buried, when one of the miners went down into the mine full of 115, they stayed down there for 10 days, and when they returned, they were changed. They had become a zombie, and as 
Jeb says, his mind was gone, his flesh all sollow and bloody, his eyes are blazing a red light. Something happened to one of the miners. Clive Farnsworth, a good man, came by the shop a few times. Anyway, he went down into that mine, stayed down there for ten days. When he came back up, he was... Uh, changed. They say he was like a feral animal, rabid and carnivorous. His mind was gone, his flesh all sallow and bloody, his eyes ablaze in a, a red light. This zombie in 1885 had red eyes, yet no one during that time was in control of them, so this tells us the zombies with red eyes don't have a leader. There is no one that's controlling them. And that makes sense because we see them in Blood and Mob, there's no controller then. In Tagdo Totem, no one's in control. But I also remember in one of the Q&A interviews with Jason Blundell a long time ago, he was asked about the eye colour of the zombies and he said, sometimes it means something, sometimes it means nothing at all. And this could make sense because in Derizen Dracker, the zombie's eyes are yellow, yet Samantha isn't in control during that time. Even Rick Toffin thought she was, because he says quotes like, Samantha, are you doing this? But we know she isn't, so in that case I just have to say, sometimes it means something, sometimes it means nothing. Sure, Scrungeous Bungus says, and this is what a lot of people have been asking, I've seen this a ton in the comment section, you say, how did Ultimus prevail? Ever since Black Ops 3 released, Shadows of Evil, we first found a cipher in that map that said, Primus will fail. And then, since Black Ops 4's released, we've had ciphers and messages on the wall that's been saying, Ultimus will prevail. So, putting these both together, this message, which says, Primus will fail, Ultimus will prevail, in Zombies, doesn't really seem to make too much sense with what we've seen happen in the end. We all thought this was a hint, a clue as to what was going to happen at the end of Zombies, and I suppose you could say Primus will fail when we first got that message in Black Ops 3. That does relate to what we saw happen. Primus did fail in that game because the cycle was reset, a paradox was caused, and Primus failed to escape. Although at the end of Revelations, they defeated the Apothecans and banished them back to the Dark Aether, actually what we know happened is, at the end, Monty just resets the cycle, sends them back to the Great War, where they would battle against the Apothecans, die, and then meet up hundreds of years later in Origins. So technically, Primus did fail because they didn't stop anything. Their cycle continued. But then in Black Ops 4 Zombies, we all of a sudden had a message that told us Ultimus will prevail. And this is the one that doesn't quite make sense because prevail means to prove more powerful or superior. It means to win, to triumph, be victorious. As you say in your comment, how the hell were Ultimus victorious? How did Primus fail, but Ultimus won? One way you could think about it is Without Ultimus, the cycle would have never been broken. Primus were going through this whole journey on themselves. However, whatever they would do, they would only cause the cycle to reset. But in Black Ops 4 and Classified, when they meet up with Ultimus, it is only then that they break the cycle. Without Ultimus, Primus wouldn't have broken it. So you could look at it in that way. Primus failed to break the cycle, but along with Ultimus, they succeeded. That's how Ultimus prevailed. But that isn't quite true because it was both of these teams working together that broke the cycle. I think it's a bit harsh to say Primus failed, but that cipher mostly related to Black Ops 3. That's where we first saw it. That is the game that Primus failed. And Ultimus prevail, we only saw this message in Black Ops 4. And this is the game that they did prevail by breaking the cycle. So in that sense, when you separate them both, it does make sense. Dorian Clark says, what happened to the staffs? I think we've all been asking this question. Before Tagdo Totem released, we all thought we were going back to the Great War. That's what had been hinted at in Alpha Omega. We were seeing images of the Great War. Samantha even said in that cutscene that they're going back there and then they're going to Monty's house to burn it all to the ground. We were all hyped for this Great War map and then all of a sudden, even though it was leaked a few weeks or a month prior, instead we are playing as the transit crew 
in Tagged a Totem or Call of the Dead, building the Orgothan device. So using the staffs wouldn't make sense, but if we went back to the Great War like we all thought, then more than likely, the wonder weapons we would have been using would have been the original staffs. But you can't really blame anyone for thinking we'd be using them again, because us going back to the Great War is what made sense in terms of story, and we were specifically told by Samantha at the end of Alpha Omega that's where they were going to put an end to all of this. Yet in DLC 4, we see nothing happen. The characters don't go to the Great War. They also don't go to Monty's house like Samantha says. They don't burn it to the ground. Instead, the Primus and Ultimus crew stay in the forest and Victus are teleported to Tagdo Totem where they collect the Argothan device give it back to Nikolai, and he uses it to destroy the multiverse. I do find it kind of strange how Treyarch led us to believe DLC4 was going to be the Great War. Why would Samantha say she was going there and to Monty's house if she wasn't? I I, I don't know, but that that's all I can say for that one. Anyway, guys, there we go. That is it. That is all for today's video. As always, hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, you know what to do. Drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.